Hi, welcome to this week's uh, short watercolour tutorial. My name's Howard Jones and um, if you're liking these uh, tutorials, these short tutorials, uh, then please do subscribe. I also put out on a Thursday um, other tutorials. They're often um, excerpts, clips, um, from my live classes, whereas this is uh, specific um, for Tuesday, as it's always a sort of shorter, sometimes shorter than others. Some, they're usually somewhere between 10 minutes and 40 minutes, something like that. I tried to keep them as close to 20 minutes as possible. It depends on what the subject matter is. Um, anyway, this week I thought I would do um, a cityscape from imagination. Uh, it's a request that I've had, uh, so so let's see, um, you know, um, how we go about it. Uh, somebody requested it from the live uh, class a couple of weeks ago, so I promised to oblige. Uh, it was sort of, you know, I know you can do sort of imaginary landscapes um, because they sort of lend themselves to a sort of, I suppose, a little more freedom, um, but... Um, the question was, could I do these sort of uh, same thing with with lands uh, with cityscapes? And I think the 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 simple answer is yes, as I'm about, I hope I'm about to sort of show. Um, you just got to think in geometrical, in the sense of geometrical, um, and, and obviously be a bit creative. I, I, I suppose I am basing this on um, previous paintings that I've made. I sort of see scenes of Europe. Domed buildings often play quite a um, a major part in my choice of subject matter. So, um, so I break up. It's all about how you break up the surface of the paper, really, that, that you're working on. It's all about your design and composition. So, just you know, as you can see, I sort of draw over things from time to time. We'll have a, a slightly lower building, perhaps running about here. I'll erase anything I don't, I feel as though, you know, it's not going to work. I've got lines within lines, shapes within shapes. So I don't want all of them necessarily. Um, so now that we've got something on this side of the road or this side of the city, uh, perhaps we'll consider slightly different, something taller on this side. So we create a little bit of an L shape. As I say, I, I sort of refer to, well, this is, trust me, there's no, there's no photograph within sight. Um, you have to trust me on that one. Uh, but um, because after a while of painting, um, and, and you can all do this, you know, if you just take some of your photos, some of your favourite photos, photos that interest you, um, just look at them, just absorb them for a while. Um, and once you feel sort of fired up from what, from what you, has caught your attention in those photos, put them aside, just hide them. Um, and, and, and don't, whatever you do, think that uh, once you start painting, allow your memories of, of those photos to, 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 um, to guide you, if you like, in, in your creativity. But don't, as I say, whatever you do, don't compare the uh, finished painting to any of those photos. They, they were really, the photos are really just there to inspire you, to give you ideas. So there's my sketch. This is all done in real time. Um, I have a clock running. Um, this, is, this is my timer here. Uh, I set it at 30 minutes, probably set it at 30 minutes, so I'm four minutes in. And um, I'm just going to get some just get a large brush out here, take some cerulean blue to the sky, perhaps up here something like this, very weak, cerulean blue, little bit of warmth at the bottom of the sky, so that's a little bit of um, raw sienna, and I, I'm sort of painting mostly the sky only and painting around the buildings but watch what I do here because this bit I feel this building is further away down down the street or further further into the distance at least uh, 
I just feel as though that that sky colour can drift into those nooks and crannies and edges because that'll help push those further buildings aside. Whereas perhaps these cl closer buildings here, um, you know, they'll receive uh, a lot more paint. So uh, why don't we warm up the right hand side? This, that was more or less raw sienna here. So there is my sort of L shape, if you like, okay. Now, um, I think I'll just keep the initial stages quite warm. And I'm just delivering some warmth where I feel as though it, it, it'll work best. Uh, as a ten, as a, a, off the top of these higher buildings, tend to sort of cool things down a little bit up here uh, as things sort of get um, as vertical walls as they get further away from the ground they tend to cool off a bit and that's because of the effects of light you know the 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 the, the light from the sky is more prevalent on uh, or more noticeable um, at, at those those higher areas so the lower areas are often quite a bit warmer than the um, the lower walls are often quite a bit warmer than the upper areas of the walls. So, distance, this is slightly further away than this building, so it'll receive a slightly weaker warm colour. And, uh, as I say, I, I don't, when I'm doing paintings like this, it, it's more of an exercise. Uh, than than it is a, 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 you know a desire to have a finished painting that's going to go in a frame. They often do. That that's that's the amazing thing about these. Um, they often end up um, looking better than you expect them to, given that you just spent such little time on, on them. Um, and I think that proves that it's all about um, the precious issue, you know, that, uh, uh, that if, you, if you can switch off from that fear of painting things badly, um, then um, you will get results, you will get, your, your work will start to improve. So delivering paint roughly as to how I see it, I'll warm it up again down here. It's a little bit of burnt sienna. The the only thing I you know I, I sort of I apologise in advance for is that um, because I because when you're painting like this it's very rapid. I often don't think about the name of the colour that I'm using. It's just it it don't, it has only two identities. It's either cool or it's warm. Um, the only thing the other thing you might add to that of course is whether it's transparent or opaque. So. Um, I will try to sort of tell you the uh, colours. The brain isn't over there in that in that area that you know the the part of the brain that tells you uh, n names of um, of paints. I know that sounds a bit weird, but um, it, it's it's definitely that right left brain thing. So I'm just showing a couple of areas, so, uh, sort of areas where there might be some inf inferred detail. That's just, uh, that's indigo. I do know the name of that one because it always looks so strong when it first goes on. It, it pales off a lot. So... So the green that you can see me using is a is a, a watery thalo green mostly, and uh, sometimes when that green gets too cold, when it when the paint it, it's too much of that colour, will of course will have your painting looking very cold. So you have to try and strike a balance between the warm colours and the cool areas, the the, the, the warm areas and the cool areas. So let's imagine there's some divided stories to this building here. Uh, 
Um, just really flitting here between raw sienna, uh, ultramarine blue, and that um, that phthalo green sometimes. So, and a little bit of light red with the phthalo green will give me a nice dark. So, perhaps if I go too dark, what I'll do is I'll, I'll um, add a little bit of cerulean to that. Okay. So I'm trying to get my timing right here. This um, domed building uh, that I applied paint to a while back there is still quite wet. Imagine the top of this building having some sort of um, rooftop structures to it, sometimes ornamental, sometimes um, some sort of service area for for the building, access to the top of the building. And so I always think, I always sort of say to people at a class, you know, if you want to paint convincingly f from um, imagination, I, I, th I think it's about conviction. If you, you can get, a, you can paint anything if you've got enough conviction to say, well, you know, this is what I want it to look like. This is what I, this is what I, th I've seen. Um, it must exist because I've seen it somewhere. So, just have a side to this edge to this building here, perhaps. Oh, the, uh, this is just still a, a, a very dark mix of um, ultramarine blue burnt sienna with a, sometimes a little bit of cerulean blue in, in here to keep things a little cooler. Perhaps we can have a little bit more cerulean blue in that building there. Is it looking a little bit too sort of neat and clever? I don't, I don't want it... I don't want too much in the way of detail. Ground line about here. Now that the dome building has dried off a little bit, I see that as an opportunity, a time and opportunity to uh, make some of these shapes uh, stick. You know, that there's, it's a bit drier, so therefore the mark that I make will probably uh, stay put. I don't think necessarily there are colours for windows, colours for doorways, colours for roof lines. Um, I tend to think more about the tonal value. I, t tone is, is, is more important, of course, um, getting the tonal value right. So, having said that about the colour, the, the choice of colour isn't always my concern. What is my concern is whether it's warm or cool. You know, because it, it, it sometimes, it, if it's not warm or cool, then it's in between. It, it's a, it's a neutral of sorts. It's a, you know, um, a grey that's been modified to, um, and maybe that that grey is a slightly warm grey. Maybe it's a slightly cool grey. But yeah, I think. You know, I think we need sometimes to sort of move away from worrying about the actual colour, the, the family of colour. It, it's, just think, is it, is it warm or is it cool? Does it lean towards red or browny red or does it lean towards blue or cold green? Um, that's really all we should concern ourselves with. Now, I quite like 
creating a bit of atmosphere by dropping in water. I, I'm really working on cheap paper here, incidentally. Um, I mean, my favourite... I'm not working on my favourite paper. Um, again, this is a lot to do with making yourself feel more comfortable and not too precious. Um, as it happens, I this is Bockingford. Uh, this is paper called Bo Bockingford. Um, get it? It's readily available here in the UK. Um, but as I say, for certain um, paintings, even though it's a, a relatively cheap paper, for certain paintings, I would favour it. Um, it's it, it's certainly not a paper I'd use for certain other pr uh, subjects, but. Um, yeah, it, it's it certainly. I, I I like it for this type of um, this sort of exercise, this type of scene. I'm just going to start beefing up the the colours and the intensity. So it's a lot of uh, ultramarine blue down here. So at the times like this, I'll almost pick up any colour I fancy. Um, uh, and then if it's wrong, if it's cold, and it should, uh, rea I quickly realise it should have been warm. But by working that quickly, I, I think you educate the brain um, better in a way, more forcibly. Uh, you educate it in a way by where the, the experience uh, b becomes a, a bit an easier to remember experience. Um, you just go in with something... Um, and then change it if you think it's wrong. As I say, you know, if I go in somewhere and I think, oh, you know, that should have been a warm colour, not a not a cool colour. Um, we definitely learn our best stuff from from the mistakes, the moments of mistakes, as long as those mistakes can be memorised. Right, I'm going to just speed dry this. Um, I think there's something required more in this building back here. What's at ground level down here, we'll worry about in a moment. But I'm going to speed dry this. Uh, I just knock out, just want to sort of vignette the edges of my painting. I want to create not just a sort of cityscape, perhaps there's a building down there somewhere. Uh, not just a cityscape, but a cityscape in early morning, something like that. We'll have. We'll suggest there's another building down there somewhere. Like this. Okay, let's speed dry it. doesn't have to be perfectly dry. I just want to get in with some inferred detail next. So my mix for this will be... We'll have a bit of ultramarine blue. Move that into sight. Ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. And uh, just perhaps... Out here, we'll suggest some structure, some areas that are closer to us. Perhaps there's a, a, a row of um, railings or whatever back here. Imagine this being sort of an old big bank building, um, one of those sort of buildings they used to build back in the early 20th century. With... And I'm just really thinking about the type of thing that is likely to break up this sort of scene. You know, there'd be things in the street, signs, posts, uh, perhaps traffic, um, traffic signs.
and just leave it like that for the moment. And just take a rigger brush black sometimes against the sky up here you know there's often these uh, posts that stick at the top of buildings in places one or two areas further back that might just get a little detail not too much Now I'm just going to sort of, I think I need to sort of flood an area down here just to infer um, that there's a little bit more detail in some places. So let's do that. I'll go back to this big, actually I didn't use that one did I earlier, I used, let's go back to the one I used which is the cheap, really cheap scruffy brush and we'll suggest a bit of shadow down here across the foreground coming in from this side and that would probably mean that we need to put shadow on the left, shadow over some of the right hand buildings. So I will turn to a nice big flat brush for this, a one inch flat brush. Ultramarine blue, a little bit of alizarin crimson. Make a big puddle of this. So it's probably the scariest part of, of any watercolour painting, is putting shadow on at the end like this. But I do think that, um, you know, um, if you can just knuckle down and, and accept the fact that, you know, your painting will be so much better for it. Uh, you've got to practice these things, obviously, as much as possible. Like this, on these sort of, um, uh, these paintings that are allowed to morph one way or the other as, as, as you see fit as you're painting through. Um, these exercises it will help you just break out of that fear, if you like, of, um, let's say, that the shadow lands over here, something like this. It's off the top of this building up here, something like that. And... Um, And it lands on certain surfaces where, you know, the light manages to avoid the shadow. It's bounce light perhaps from the other side of the road. So this would all be in shadow. Don't be afraid just to blast things out. Maybe there's shadow down through here. See if we can infer, you know, shadow, light is an amazing thing. You can get this effect of light just moving through the spaces and shadow moving through the space like this. And uh, let's just say it lands on the opposite side of the road, something like that. Shadow back there. You probably guessed already the light's coming from the left hand side.
just very quickly mixing up a little more shadow to run across that immediate ground there. Closing that side off. I will sometimes soften, soften uh, the edge of a shadow such as here. Just lifting off anything I don't like the look of. And we'll just put a couple of figures in. I think probably we have to put a little bit of shadow on that distant uh, building back there. Something like that again. Probably because it's a sort of suggested of a rounded building, that shadow edge should be much softer. Couple of little figures and we'll call this a finished job. So just a couple of figures just going about their business here. Walking from work from the train station to work or from work to the train station, that would be better. Going home. And for a little bit of light perhaps on one or two shoulders. Just taking gouache directly from the um, the tube of paint here. A little bit of spatter, which I always like. A few lines. And I think we'll call that a finished exercise. Let's put the mount around it and see what it looks like. There we are, you know, that's within 30 minutes. Um, I know that it's within 30 minutes because my little uh, timer on my camera here uh, has told me that I'm very close um, to my uh, 30 minute limit here. So I'll sign off from here. Do please subscribe. Um, it really helps and hit the icon, uh, sorry, the bell icon if you wish to have immediate notifications as and when my new um, videos get uploaded. Hope you enjoyed this one and see you again.